Before the video starts, have you ever wanted pro players to analyze your gameplay and point out key mistakes? You can do that right now as a skill cap member in our premium Discord channels. Visit the link in the description to learn more about all our perks, including our 250 rating gain guarantee. Anyway, back to the video. When players lose games in World of Warcraft, they often point to the big moments in a game for why they ended up failing, thinking such things as, "Oh man, why didn't I just line a sight until I got my defensives back? I played perfectly until then. Or possibly blaming the classes that you're facing. I can't believe this demon hunter jumped around and did a 20k single target DPS and killed us. Or let's be a little more realistic here. Why didn't my healer or DPS partner use this cooldown or defensive at X time? Well, don't get us wrong. It's understandable to immediately jump to conclusions and remember the big moments in any arena match that felt like the deciding factors and why a game was lost. But an important skill to learn is to also be much more aware of the little moments in a game where small choices might have big long-term impacts on your overall all win condition, which brings us to something we like to call the two minute rule. Okay, so chances are you watch streams, arena streams to be specific, right? Well, I'm sure you've more than likely noticed, whenever you're paying attention to a streamer's arena match, or even an AWC game, the win condition always seems to be a lot more obvious to you as a viewer, whether that's picking up on hints from what the streamer says, or in most cases just simply being down to spectators, having a better overview, and seeing things a lot more clearly from an outside perspective. And almost all these win conditions stem from one thing in particular, Gladiator's medallions, hence the two minute rule. To show you this rule in action, let's jump straight into a subscriber's game at around 2100 MMR. Okay, now before you jump into the comments and type, Oh my god, another video all about RMP. No, it's not. We'll be including examples from various comp archetypes. But RMP is so broken that it can abuse the two minute rule the most. So if you think you're a smart player, you should be able to follow along with this example easily and apply it to your class. Think you can do it? Anyway, back to our original game. Our RMP opens onto the enemy shaman with a blind onto the paladin and dragon's breath polymorph onto the warrior, a textbook opener and in all honesty executed like professionals. This in turn as a result instantly forces the enhancement shaman's trinket. Forcing a gladiator's medallion inside of an arena game now opens up a win condition and as a result will make your next setup even stronger. As we were talking RMP here, this forced trinket now creates a very obvious kill window. That being our rogue still has smoke bomb. Instead though, our RMP gets lost in the sauce and uses their leftover damage combined with their smoke bomb onto the warrior and with no crowd control onto the paladin, which forces absolutely nothing. So instead, abusing the fact that they forced Trinket on the Shaman, our RMP overreached and actually set themselves back. The Shaman has no Trinket, he's now the kill target. What do you gain here from hitting the Warrior? Giving them the benefit of the doubt, it could be they are looking to force the Warrior's Trinket, but this is something you can passively do while still committing goes onto the main kill target. Nonetheless, they still managed to bring it back with their next setup, forcing both the Warrior's Trinket with a dismantle and then the Paladin's Trinket Sack from a Polymorph. So to assess the game state, our RMP's win condition has only grown larger, as with each of these Trinket forces, the wider their window becomes. The Warrior can't Trinket to peel with Rally or Intervene, the Shaman can't Trinket to heal or use a defensive, and the Paladin only has his Blessing of Protection and Bubble left to deal with any form of crowd control, whereas our Rogue has his Shadow Blades ready and our Mage is very near combustion. Still on track, our RMP waits out diminishing returns, then initiates another setup, which instantly forces the bubble from the Paladin, committing only the Shadow Blades from our Rogue. And with that force, the game is essentially over, at least for us as spectators. The Mage has Combustion, not a single player is Trinket, and the Paladin has no bubble to get out of crowd control. We can very clearly see that the next setup, if made clean, with Combustion will very easily result in a kill. And using our two minute rule, we can see they have a window of around 40 seconds to make this happen. Here's the problem though, despite us all as spectators seeing just how crystal clear this win condition truly is, and just how long our RMP actually has to set this up well, and to execute on it correctly, low rated players lose touch of this, and rightly so, as in the midst of a game, it's difficult to step back and just assess the situation. Just like our RMP here, as a result, rush their setup, not fully understanding how long they have to make it work. Not only allowing the enemy shaman to get his astral shift off, but also not even waiting for diminishing returns to be over and using a half kidney. And with them failing to capitalize on this window, we can now see the whole enemy team is starting to get their trinkets back, and with that, their window to win starts to close again. And shortly after, our rogue then goes down. 
We again as spectators can very clearly pinpoint when and why this game was lost. It was the fact that they failed to capitalize on the massive window they created for themselves. But our RMP on the other hand would rather put this down to their healer being mispositioned, getting locked on cast, and not using Serenity in time to heal up the rogue. Top players, however, not only instantly recognize these openings inside of games, but also in most circumstances capitalize perfectly on them. Just take this game here, for example, from one of the highest rated RMPs in the world. In a single setup, they're able to force two trinkets from the enemy team. This, as we now know, gives them an opening of multiple two-minute timers to work with. And after working towards getting combustion and other cooldowns back for just over a minute, they're ready to now capitalize on the prior trinket force. Landing a simple Dragon's Breath into Polymorph onto the Priest, while stunning and popping Combustion onto the Retribution Paladin, making it look effortless. Now, it's very obvious to see these types of openings and win conditions from a spectator watching RMP. RMP has the tools to very easily punish trinket use with a combination of damage and crowd control, but this is by no means a concept unique to the composition. Make sure you pay attention to this rival rated LSP game playing in the background. They go into the arena with one goal in mind, hit the DPS, primarily the warrior while looking to CC the resto druid. Having game plans is great, especially in LFG where it's often difficult to be on the same page as your team, but the issue arises when you become completely rigid and narrow-minded with your target selection. Hitting one target and expecting something miraculously to happen is borderline crazy, and what you need to learn to recognize is when new opportunities arise. It's this here that I want to highlight though. In one singular setup, our LSP is able to force both the Warrior's Trinket as well as the Druid's, and to be honest, pretty randomly at that. Now, why I asked you to pay attention from the start was so you can see how this game was playing out and answer this question. With this double trinket force, what do you think our team should do now? Well, what you should have picked up from watching the game is that the enemy druid has been playing reckless to say the very least. There are druids jumping around in the middle of the map, presumably with zero hots on themselves throughout. If we again, like previously, assess the game state, we can see that our warlock has his fell obelisk, his demonic tyrant, and also Solrod and Grimyor Felguard all coming back off cooldown within under a minute. Which, if you don't speak Demonology Warlock, means he has a monstrous amount of damage ready. Which, of course, is all coming up well within that two minute timer of the Gladiator's Medallion being used. To further add to that, the Priest is Venthyr and has mind games ready. If they swap targets here with all cooldowns onto the Druid in a stun with no hots active, there is zero chance he's surviving that, and as our Warlock is freely casting, he can set up a massive Tyrant with ease. Granted, that's what should happen at least, but spoiler, it doesn't. Anyway, we understand the struggle of LFG, and you're not always in voice, and setting up kills like we just covered may not be easily achievable. Nonetheless, the warrior of which our team agreed to focus at the start still remains a viable kill target as well. All that needs to happen is we set up the tyrant with a stun coil onto the warrior and a fear onto the druid, but our team sadly doesn't see this opening. They're oblivious to the win condition that their opponents just handed to them on a platter by overlapping their trinkets when our LSP hasn't even used their offensive cooldowns. And sadly, as a result, soon as it's up, our our Warlock pops his Tyrant with very suboptimal setup and half his offensive cooldown still not ready without any crowd control onto the Druid and subsequently the window closes. So instead of playing entirely around that two minute opening and committing all the marbles, our LSP lets time run out and they inevitably just get rolled over by the cleave. Ultimately, our goal here is simply to get you to focus on these smaller moments in your arena games where something as simple as trinket usage can lead to windows of opportunity. Far more than any of the crazy random stuff that you really can't control, like your team not using defensives at the right time. Most importantly though, it's recognizing and playing around these two minute windows and really trying to focus on execution when multiple trinkets are down in order to win games. Better yet, if you want to learn more about the two minute rule, we have a brand new custom course specifically for this guide at skillcap.com. It's there you can unlock four additional site exclusive guides where we walk you through exactly how you can implement this one rule to get higher rating this season, including examples on how how both high and low rated teams correctly and incorrectly play around enemy trinkets. And of course, we have over 800 class guides and more than a thousand arena commentaries available exclusively at skillcap.com. Use the discount code below to start your PvP journey today. Anyway guys, that was an introduction on the 2 minute rule and why it's so important in arena. Let us know what you think in the comments below. As always, thank you everybody for watching and we'll see you soon.